Hello, welcome to Realism and the Issues of Social Class. Avant-Garde is arising, presented by me, your host, Chelsea Lane. Now, join me on a journey through art. The world is contemporary, change is happening rapidly, things were modernizing, and art needed to be modern too. The problem that came along with this was that this was the time period of the 1800s and 1900s and people were still invested in the classical past, which meant that modern artists seemed to be lacking in their favorite form of tradition. Realists were not interested in tradition. They were busy focusing on the working class and their everyday lives in its truest sense. There was no romanticism or idealism involved. It was direct and to the point. That was how art should be. We don't need to sugarcoat anything for you people. You see it just like we do, so what's the difference if you see it in real life or in a painting? So my main focus of this little chat here is going to be on Courbet, because he seems to be like a very hot topic when it comes to the harsh realities of realism, especially in terms of social class. Most of society views art as something that should reflect good things from reality. Reality isn't all that sweet. You don't get all the good sweet things you see in an idealized painting. Paintings really provoked hostility in middle class society. It was pretty revolutionary in the avant-garde world. I'm not going to talk too much about avant-garde, but that's basically what all of this is from the 1800s forward. It's charging forward and testing new ground, which avant-garde is French. Is a, it's a French word that means advanced guard. Basically like the scouts kind of thing. But if it helps you visualize it better, these artworks from this time were similar to music history, like when the Beatles first came around and introduced rock to the classical people who were saying, that's not music. Or when rap first came to replace rock, the rock people were saying, that's not even music, that's gibberish. It's all very similar. The music was avant-garde. My point is that people didn't like the new art, and they would say, that's not art, I don't like that. That is not art. There was just such a low acceptance. There was so much judging going around. But everywhere was becoming more modern. Why should artists be left out of the modern move? There were more and more artworks focusing on works, pe work workers, peasants, poor people, and crowds. It was the more problematic type of paintings that artists would simply choose to paint. Quaintness, local color, traditions, and processions expressed social order. Fields and streets illustrated the wholesome happiness possible through the spontaneity, never threatened to become disorder. These kinds of works of the working class were almost against the unspoken constraint in the concrete portrayal in society's lower orders. The lower classes were portrayed... How the, the lower classes were portrayed mattered a lot, especially to the upper classes. But a lot of artists simply had sympathetic views of the lower class. Peasants were victims of nature, basically. And this, this, is where my two main artists, Gustave Courbet and Jean-Francois Millet, come in. I don't speak French, if you can tell. They have a few differences, but they were both interested in painting the lower class. So was... Um... A guy named... Daumier, who was Millet's urban counterpart. I, again, I don't know how to say his name. But he got some pretty interesting work that I want to talk about last because it's so cool and attacking and you're just going to love it as much as I do. So first we're going to talk about The Stonebreakers, a painting by Courbet. It's way more confined and harsh, if you can tell. There's only a little corner at the top where you could see the sky, and that represents the freedom that they could have. <clears throat> of course, that's only confined to a little area of the painting. Now, opposing that confined space right there, Malay's painting, The Gleaners, 
visually appears much freer, despite also showing the working class. It shows the open sky and much more opportunity. Courbet's meaning is in painting realistic things rather than idealized versions of reality. The Gleaners is almost idealistic in showing that these workers are almost free. Still, both paintings from both artists depict a kind of rural poverty, but Malay's The Gleamer, Gleaners <laughs> was exhibited at the salon. It created a, quite a different kind of controversy. Still, the paintings depict hard labor, which was true to fact. Getting more about Courbet, his painting, this wonderful painting right here, a burial at Ornans, I don't know how to say that, correct me if I'm wrong, really shows the true feelings found at a funeral. I shouldn't sound so happy about this. It's dark. There are a lot of emotions that are not positive. There was no sugarcoating what a funeral looked like. There's so much emotion that goes through paintings of Courbet. It's so sympathetic. Courbet even says himself, The people have my sympathies. I must address myself to them directly. He was an avant-garde painter of unwanted facts. But I really enjoy how straightforward he was about painting what was right in front of him rather than what he couldn't see. He explains himself quite specifically like this. The art of painting can consist only in the representation of objects visible and tangible to the painter. I also hold that the painting is an essentially concrete art, and can consist only in the representation of things both real and existing. Show me an angel, and I will paint one. His burial at Warnan's painting was very crude to reality, so he definitely stuck to his word. There was nothing happy or celebratory about this scene. These paintings were really blown up on a large scale, really displaying the realistic qualities that were being judged and considered rude. Courbet was a well-known leading painter in realism, challenging the favored art styles of the time. Now, returning back to Jean-Francois Millet, who was an artist around the same time as Courbet. Here we go, continuing. He did a painting called Sheep Shearing shearing beneath a tree. It emphasized the rural areas which most of the French were migrating away from, from more modernized industrial cities. It was quite the opposite of the painters who were looking for rural, poorer things to paint. That was pretty short and sweet and to the point. But now, for the artist I've been waiting for, and that I still don't know how to say his name, Hanor... Domier, I guess. He's Millet's urban counterpart. He did a series of three paintings which showed, showed the insides of train compartments from the three different classes. High society doesn't have to pack so close together uh, on, in the first class carriage, obviously. And then as you go from the second class carriage to the third class carriage, it gets more and more crowded. The lower classes have to be packed together and closer, all bunched up like little penguins or something. It really seems to depict the poor state of the third classes. The third class and second class. Especially in comparison with the first class passengers. I feel that it was really calling people out. I have to admit, if I were in the first class, I don't think I would appreciate some artist making me look bad by comparing my amazing lifestyle to that of the lowest class. I mean, that just makes me look bad. So I kind of get the tension that the upper class would have with these artists. But Daumier also did lithographs in a French journal, La Caricature and Le Cherivery. I'm so sorry, I don't speak French, in which he was satirizing the government officials and the manners of the bourgeoisie. But much like other artists, he doesn't withhold his opinions, and I really like that about his works. Though such things like that got him, and also later Courbet, arrested which he also did some drawings while in prison, noting the rough conditions that even children were subjected to. 
Even in prison, he was still doing his sympathetic art. These artists are pretty amazing, especially the class carriages. Kudos. There were a lot of issues dealing with social class. I'm just pretty pleased that there was an avant-garde movement where the artists really displayed it. Finally, my bibliography. You have my amazing sources that you can also go and read anytime you want. Well, thank you for listening. That is all I have for you.